May 10th, 2010. We're going to be headed out with Vortex 2 today. We have a very significant uh, potential for a severe weather outbreak, high risk per SPC standards. Um, on the convective outlooks, we are looking at a 30% tornado bracket that may go up with time um, just east of the I-35 up to northeast Oklahoma, extreme southeast Kansas. Um, Going to be a big day today. Uh, part of one of the reasons is we have a beautiful, beautiful 500 millibar trough coming in with um, an exiting jet above us. Um, looking at 21 or 18Z to 21Z. Beautiful setup um, as far as tornadoes go. Uh, the shear is sufficient, the instability is sufficient. Uh, you're looking at uh, the average cape here stretching up along into Oklahoma uh, at uh, 21Z there, 18Z here. Really, what we're looking at, uh, the biggest reasons that we're going to see um, tornadoes today are the helicity numbers. Um, very, very high, looking great. Um, at zero to one kilometers right there and if we look at the surface uh, moisture you're going to see very substantial dew points working up into the 70s um, by zero Z and if you notice those winds uh, we will have backed southeasterly winds uh, favoring uh, the late afternoon early evening um, so tornado development is highly probable today with the chance for Significant, significant severe weather. So, um, definitely could see some big tornadoes today. I'm almost positive we, that will be tornadoes today. Whether or not Vortex 2 intercepts them, we'll see. Storm motions are going to be 35, 40 knots, which is pretty quick. So, uh, beginning of a very interesting day. This is one of those days you wake up and you really don't know how your day is going to turn out. But uh, right now, outside, a little of clouds, like all high risk days are. All that moisture streaming in and stability, just a little bit of cap. It's going to road throughout the day. Dry line's going to push. It's going to be interesting. All right, update. It's 1 p.m. Met up with the MWR. We're going to be scouting out positions. We're sitting in Stroud. Here's the scout car. Beautiful little piece of machinery. Holding up at a McDonald's for the next hour or so. Looks like we're going to make a move west with the MWR. Rather than stay so far east with the rest of Vortex 2, I really don't like their positioning at all. So I'm glad that Howie wants to go west. I'm going to update my look here um, at McDonald's. We'll look at my laptop, see what's up, and hopefully get out of here and go west. So almost 1.30 here in Stroud, and you can begin to see some dances in the dry line here. Gusts into 42. Dew point just dropped 10 degrees, dropping just north of that. Gusts into 34, down to 60. And south there, 58. Gusts into 34, and corresponding uh, Q field developing along that. So. Um, this stuff back here is all still elevated as the dry lines it stretches north through up here. You can see our clearing through western Oklahoma and along with a little bit of stability and then our gravity waves there. Um, we're probably going to have a better idea where our targets are going to be in the next two hours or so. Going on 2 o'clock and I just want to go on record that what I called earlier with this bulge right here, there's going to be a supercell that comes off of this and it's going to streak east and it's going to be developed in a supercell probably within an hour or so of now. Before it crosses I-35, I bet it will produce a tornado and we will be too far east to intercept that tornado with no guarantees whether or not it will keep producing the tornado or not. We're also probably going to see it unzip along this line throughout the day and we might see a complete, we might see a complete hole of supercells here, possibly. I don't know, we'll see. There is some tornadic activity up here, but this push right here might not be happening. We might not have initiation along here. Just going on record, saying that I do not agree with Vortex 2 today. 3.30 sitting south of Stillwater right now. Here's the storm I talked about earlier. It is tornado warned, looking beautiful. Hook on it, probably producing a tornado shortly before it gets to I-35 as it predicted earlier. Um, they got some storms over here, We're waiting for them to get stronger. Hopefully win out against the weak cap that's there in place. Um, they're kind of steady state right now, but these storms are starting to look stronger in the last radar scan. That's good news for us, bad news for anybody east of there. Uh, the development of these storms before they hit I-35 is questionable because they're going off later. Um, however, I-35 is right here. We are sitting east of I-35 and north of 44 and just south of Stillwater. Uh, we'll see what happens here, but man, that storm looks tasty right there. Probably going to get a few more of those out of these guys as time goes on. Again, it's only 3.30.
see what happens. There are some little bloops, little blips showing up west of Norman in the metro. Those are what I'm watching for people back home. As far as what we're concerned about, that's going to be these storms right here if they can get their act together. Uh, we'll see what happens over the next hour or so. All right, six o'clock, and it's been terrible trying to update uh, my video camera because it's been driving everywhere. This has opened up just like I thought earlier, moving all the way down I-35. All this stuff went through over I-35 corridor, dropped a few tornadoes west of the I-35 corridor against what everybody in Vortex was saying, a bunch of morons. And you had tornado warning in Norman, supposedly something dropped down the south side of campus. Out of this cell, we're getting mergers thrown into this thing. We are south of Prague. Out of, on I-27, or 20, not I-27, but Route 27, I believe, setting up to try to intercept this guy. South, we're just south of uh, I-40 right here. Um, and we're going to try to intercept this storm as it goes past. We're looking at another merger here, along with a whole crap ton more of storms that are developing. And we might have another round coming down out of here, just south of Norman. So Norman's not out of the woods yet, so... I'm uh, going to get out here and see if we can get some data. At the intersection of Highway 9 and 27, uh, this storm supposedly was just putting down a large tornado not too long ago while we were in its path. We dropped south. Um, don't got a great look at it right now because of low visibility, but uh, looks pretty nasty in there. Let me go grab the truck. Inflow's picking up. I can see rain wrapping around that. I just can't see, just too far away out here. I think that's settling into a bowl. I think that's I think that might tornado again right now. It's getting low. It's scraping the ground. That looks like a tornadic circulation possibly passing over the road out there. That is low, it looks like it's rotating. And I just can't get the exposure on it. I just can't do it. I can't tell. I'm too far away. And I don't have an angle on it. I really want to run up there. That may be a wedge. Why does my first wedge have to be so, so dark? I can't tell from here, but I don't know, I got radar, radar data, we're too far away. That very well could be a tornado on the ground right now. It's a little bit of Yeah. Not a very good day to trace with a radar truck. Yeah. Actually, you, this is probably one of the best ones. It's all right. I'd like to be about <laughs> 30 times closer. Well, Not an option. So we were just looking at this storm over here, where I thought I saw, where I thought I saw that wedge tornado. Um, almost guaranteed that that was a wedge tornado with that signature. This storm back here could also be producing, and this storm just in southeast of Norman is obviously producing. Uh, big tornado day.